A very warm welcome to this new video which I have brought to you where I'll teach you another interesting thing. Today we are going to learn about infinite scroll. Many of you might have learned about it but still I want to show you a few more stuff out here. Alright, so let's see what exactly we are going to learn in this particular video. But before getting started, there is a limited period offer that is going on in my course. So just check it if you haven't done yet. So with that being said, let's dive into this particular video right now. So out here to start off, I have already created a new project which you can see out here and I'm already running Ionic Serve out here. And this is the one that is showing up now how to create a new project if you do not know. Let me just show you out here in the terminal. Well, out here I simply used a command. Let me just show you. So this is the command that is being used for creating a new project. Ionic start, then the app name, then what kind of template you want, blank template or the tabs template, you can just select that up. And the type is angular. All right. Now after doing that, I'll just scroll down and out here it is asking to create a free Ionic account. Well, I have gone for no, otherwise you have to create that and it's a paid one to use the Ionic app flow. Well, I have not gone for that, not needed. And after that, I simply enter the particular folder which is created on which the project is created. And then I just type this particular code to enter my Visual Studio code. And so in this manner, I am entering in this particular Visual Studio code where I have cleaned up the SCSS, then the home page also almost I've cleaned. This is the code. I've just changed the title and other things I've simply replaced or removed, I would say. And in the TypeScript also, well, there is nothing I've done as of now. Fine. So in order to work with the infinite scroll, at first we need to have a list out here. So we need to have a list of array that can be shown out here. So at first, what am I going to do in my TypeScript? I'm going to create a list, which I'll name it as, let me call it an array only, that will be of type any array, which will be equals to a list, which I'll simply paste it. You can get it from my source code, which I have already shared in the description. All right, if you want to. So these are just random numbers, contact numbers, basically, which I placed out here. Okay, this won't be equal. It will be colon, okay? Now the error is gone. You can skip this one also. I have just given it up. It was in JSON format. So you can simply skip this part also. There won't be any problem. All right. You in this particular manner also directly you can write the names. But since I am passing it everywhere. So let me pass it in the same manner only. All right. So now our array is passed out here. Now I will in fact have another array which I will name it as list of type any array which will be an empty array initially. All right. Once that is done, everything is good to go. Now what I'll do, let me create a list at first in my HTML. So out here in the iron content, what am I going to do? I'm going to use iron list within which I will have the iron item. All right. To which I will pass ng4 will be equals to let list of or list. Let me call it item of list. All right. Close it up. And after this also just enter once, not out here, sorry. Out here it's gonna be fine so that we can have proper spacing everywhere. Now within this iron item, well, I'm going to display at first in the iron label, iron label. So let me pass out here item question mark dot name because we have name out here. Let me just show you in the TypeScript one. Out here you can see we have name, email and phone. So in order to make the list little bit bigger i will have the other stuff also within this so let me just break it down and within the sign label i'll have a p tag also where i'm simply going to pass item question mark dot phone and at last i will also have another p tag where i will simply pass the email item question mark dot email fine you won't be able to see anything let me just do one thing at first. Let me just minimize this up and out here in the constructor or you can use ng on it also. I have already explained you the difference in the previous lectures. You can just check it out. There is a specific video on ng on it versus constructor. Okay. So let me just pass it out here for the time being. This dot list will be equals to let's say array or a copy of an array by using the spread operator in this particular manner. I'll use triple dot. That is in fact called a spread operator. All right. So now you can see the complete list of 30 items because out here in the array, we have 30 items. You can see out here, all the numbers are given properly. So 30 items in fact. All right. So now I have this list of 30 items out here. Okay. 
you can see Francis Perez that's the last one that we have out here so it is showing up pretty nicely everything is coming up now you can see the name then phone number and finally the email okay so this is how it is working now we need to apply pagination to that so in order to apply the pagination I have to break down this particular array that is why I have created two arrays out here one will keep all the data and the other one will work based on the pagination so in order to work with the pagination let me not not initialize this in the constructor let me initialize it in the ng on init so implements on init all right import it up once that is imported simply have it out here ng on init okay selected and i'll simply pass this thing from here to here all right i hope it's clear pretty simple correct now instead of passing the whole array we need to work with the pagination so let me just pass 10 items at a time so for doing that up let me do something out here let me have page number initial page number to be zero okay after that per page how many records do you want so how many items you want let me have 10 items per page because it will take the whole page then all right then only that infinite scroll event will take place so this is the basic things which i need now what i'll do in order to get the first 10 items from this particular array let me create a function out here and i'll call it paginate array fine and let me have this p to be small letter okay now within this function i'll first increment the page number because whenever you are entering this particular function that means you are incrementing the page so the page will be out here in initially it was zero it will become one out here okay now after that what i'll do i'll get the first 10 records and i'll return that up simply return this dot array dot filter function i'm going to use out here to determine the stuff x let me call the x x actually will be the item which is it holding so you can even pass item also any any name you can pass out here or x will be better because it is smaller just one letter okay that will give us more space out here now what i exactly need to do out here so i simply need to pass some conditions let me just break it down to make it more clear and i'll minimize this up too all right so let me paste it all right so this is the condition now i'll check two conditions out here first one is x dot id should be greater than this dot page into per page that means this dot page is value is one per page value is 10 so one into 10 is 10 minus this dot per page so uh, initially per page value is also 10 so 1 into 10 is 10 10 minus 10 is 0 so initially for the first page i'll check those id whose value is greater than 0 and then where i will stop i'll stop at when the value of id is less than or equals to this dot page into per page so that means 1 into 10 equals to 10 so if id is less than equals to 10 then i'll simply stop similarly when the page will increase this value will increase in the similar manner the condition will be applied pretty nicely okay so you can simply check that up by placing certain values and you will get your result all right so this is the function which i need to prepare now instead of passing this particular array copy i'll simply pass this dot paginate array function okay now once that is passed you can check out here how many items do i have if you just count it one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten all right so now i simply have 10 items out here so now we are going to implement the infinite scroll into our application in the html let's go out there to get the next 10 items and after that again the last 10 items because we have in total of 30 items so in order to do that up after the iron list i need to work with that so what am i going to do out here i will simply use iron infinite scroll you can suggestion is coming up and within this iron infinite scroll i will pass an event whose name is iron infinite and this function will be triggered okay this function i'll just create right now and this is the event that will be passed out there all right now within this an infinite scroll okay there is another extra space let me just close it now out here i will have some content also if you just want to show some content definitely you can use in infinite scroll content now within that we have another few properties let me just break it down in this particular manner and out here well i need to show a spinner and some text if you want to so let me simply have few properties loading spinner and loading text 
So I've given the spinners a circle by default. And if you are confused, you want to check the documentation. Let me just show you out here. Ion, Ionic framework documentation. Let me just enlarge it. And out here, I'll go to the components, search for infinite scroll. This is coming up. Now you can check out here how exactly it works. Out here, you can simply see this is the virtual scroll element and this is the infinite scroll. Okay. So this is how you need to use it up. Similarly, similar way we have also implemented it up. Now you can check out here in a proper manner what exactly it's been done. Now the threshold value is 100 pixels, which is I think the standard one you need to give. And in the loading spinner, you can pass bubbles or anything you want. Loading more data. Similarly, we have passed the same thing only. And out here you can play around with all this particular stuff. Okay. Toggle infinite scroll. Well, you can play around with this particular functionality if you want to. So in this similar manner, you can just play around. You can just check the properties, disabled position, where you want to exactly position it up, bottom or top. Okay. Threshold value by default, it is 15%. But if you increase that up, I have not seen any change. So I've just not applied it up. For example, use the value of 10% for the infinite. Okay. You can decrease it up maybe fine. So this is the event which we have already triggered and the methods well complete method. We will be using it up. Don't need to worry. Fine. And these are some styling part. You can just check that out. So this is the whole stuff. We are in the right track to work with this particular component. So let's work with this. I'll close it and minimize it up. All right. So now everything is good to go in our HTML. Now simply we need to work with the TypeScript. So I'll go to the TypeScript and out here I'll create a function called load more. Okay, more spelling is fine now. And I'll pass the event as a argument which we will log out here. Okay, event fine. Let's check this out. So if I just scroll out here, you will see. Okay, let me just scroll. You can see this is coming up. Correct because I have not given any condition to stop that. So it will keep on showing and I can see out here what exactly it is showing in this particular event triggered. So out here I have all the things detail null. Then there is one target. So this is the target which we can where we can use the complete method and other stuff. So if you're still getting a fuse, let's work with that and you will understand how exactly we need to work with this particular function. Now out here, what I'll do, I'll simply use a set timeout because I need to show this particular loader for a certain time period. Otherwise, this is a local data and it's going to come up pretty fast. Okay. So I want you to see that loader pretty nicely. That is why I'll just give it set timeout where I'll pass the callback at first and then a timeout of let's say one second will be fine. I suppose you can reduce that also if you want to 500 millisecond, which you have already seen in the example in the documentation. So let me just have this one out here and I, in this particular one, I'll pass the conditions or we'll get the next 10 data. So now what am I going to do? Well, I'll create a constant called array, which will be equals to this dot paginate array because whenever I'm calling this function, the page is getting incremented and based on that, the next 10 data will be called. Okay. So this particular array will hold that data. And after that, I will simply concate that data with the earlier list in this particular manner. This dot list will be equal to this dot list dot concate. And within that, I have simply pass this array. So it will be appended out here in this particular list. Once that is done, what am I going to do? I need to complete this event. Otherwise, the loader will still show up. Okay. Uh, which I don't want. So I'll simply have event dot target dot complete for method I can use out here to stop that particular loading one. And if you trigger it again, it will load again. All right. If it has the data. Now, in case if you have got 30 items altogether, all right, you have scrolled three times, you have got 10, 10, 10, 30 finished. Now you don't have any other items. So next time if you scroll, you won't see any data. And in case say like instead of 30, if you have like 28 items, okay. So you have scrolled twice. You have got 20 items for the third time. You've got eight items, which is lesser than per page items, right? So we can detect out here if the per page item is less than num the number which is given that is per page, which is equal to 10. Then also we can disable this particular event and how we can do it up. Let me just show you out here. We can simply pass this condition. If array length is less than per this dot per page, then we will simply trigger the event and disable it up. Okay. In this particular manner, I hope it's clear. If you don't want to do this, you can simply skip that up. Then again, it's going to, whenever you scroll, 
the event will get triggered all right so you can play around with all this stuff if you want fine now what am i going to do everything is good to go nothing else is left i suppose we can simply try this particular functionality now all right so out here you have seen already we had 10 items now if i just okay, scroll towards the top let's see what happens you can see load more data and if you just want to see what exact value we have got then i can simply do one thing i'll log out share console.log new data okay then i'll simply pass array out here okay and similarly after we load more data i want to see the list value also so i'll have out here list data which will be this dot list okay i hope it's clear now let's check it out and i'll open this up the console log fine let's check this out so i'll simply scroll the event is getting triggered new data 10 items and list will have 20 items fine so if i just scroll towards the top then it's fine there is no harm in doing that but if i scroll to the bottom again the next 10 items is getting called you can see now the list has 30 item new data 10 items called once again if i just try to scroll it is calling the scroll and i have no new data it is empty and in the list i still have 30 items okay now if i scroll you can see the scroll is not coming up because it is detected that the array length is less than per page one that is why it is disabled out here okay this there should be a semicolon fine so this is what is it's being done out here so i hope you have understood how to implement the infinite scroll out here you can play around with the condition that you actually want out here and the type of data you want you can just filter that up okay even to the back end also you can just place the query from the api you can just request the query using the api out here and get the latest data and work with that in the similar manner fine so this is what i wanted to show you but before closing this up let me just do one thing in the home.html let me give some color to this iron toolbar color to be let's say success color green color let's see how it looks like all right i am liking it okay so this is looking better because i want the greenish color because iron infinite scroll some way or the other related will look good in green color or something or the default color you can just give the blue color also that is the default one or you can change the theme also if you want all right so i'm happy with this all right so with this our video is finally done you have learned all the stuff so if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you new out here please do that up that will help the channel grow and will boost my confidence to get more interesting videos for you so keep watching subscribe to the channel like the video share with your friends and i'll see you pretty soon in the next video till then stay safe stay healthy